Hello, welcome to this project, and it is a minimalist. When I say minimalist, it's a very small compiled binary web server. So it's an HTTP server, which is very small. And if I run it, and then we'll look at the code. Server listening on port 8080. And if I do curl i for interactive, I'll get the status and the content as well. So um, let me just run it with nothing. So hello, this is your Rust server responding. And then we'll run it with time. It should give us the time, which it has done. And then we'll run it with another function, which is sleep. And then it should come back in a second. So three functions. So what I wanted to do was actually write my own web server, but try and kind of um, build something similar to kind of, uh, you know, Axum and ActixX and so on. I just wanted to put in some roots. So quite often you'll see, um, you'll see tutorials. Tim Clicks did a really good one. But I wanted to actually go slightly beyond that and add in some roots which are here. So these are the, the three roots, so to speak. I had to get ChatGPT to help me with these. So um, disclaimer, ChatGPT helps with these three lines and it helped with this bit. But other than that, um, I can memorize and do kind of uh, write the server and the handle connection function from memory now. So I'm, I'm happy with that. So the banner is the banner is the L banner, which is in a separate file. Um, it's using standard IO, which it brought in for me. Um, so typically you'll use um, standard std net TCP listener, TCP stream, and you may also want to use threads. So this is creating a new thread, uh, a new thread for each connection which is probably what you would want to do for a web server. Um, let me just turn, if I turned off type hints, no, I haven't. So we guess that's slightly better. Um, the one thing you'll notice is when you, <laughs> you know, the old 80 characters per line thing, that goes out the window a bit once you start doing uh, lots of quotes with HTTP and, you know, long strings. And um, Anyway, here we've got a, um, a tuple. So status line and content. So basically we're deconstructing whatever we get. So if it's just get, then we've got the status line will be this, or up to there rather. We're changing it to a string because that's what we need. We need a string rather than a slice. Um, so that's the status line and this is the content. So that's what you get with the uh, the, the root URL, which is just uh, forward slash. If you do forward slash sleep, if buffer starts, so what's the buffer? The buffer is this. So the buffer is what you're reading from the stream. So everything with TCP uh, listener is, is, or TCP stream is obviously bytes. It's not um, a string as such. So, um, You'll read that into you read the bytes into the buffer, and then if the buffer buffer starts with sleep, and sleep is this, but as bytes, so um, I still need to really get used to using this using bytes more often. Um, it's definitely something you'll need to be acquainted with if you start using TCP and TCP stream, TCP listener, and so on. Um, I'll just gloss over most of this because down here we've got the usual thing where we've got a response and then we write our response as bytes. And if you've done the, any, even the Rust book has got a web server at the end, uh, you start off doing a standard web server and then it makes it into a multi-threaded one. So the sleep function and the time function, those are the two functions that run uh, and it's obviously conditional on whether you pass in when you do curl or when you, to be honest, doesn't have to be curl, you could use Postman or whatever and, um, or effectively be a, if you use it as a web server, then um, that's what you'll get back. So, um, 
this is fairly standard. So really the main things which I've changed with a little bit of help from ChatGPT is this. So this is the main <clears throat> bit which handles the, if it was Axum or a proper um, API framework, then this would be what would be handling the routes or the, the routes as uh, people would say if they're from America. Okay, so <clears throat> just demo it again. And then I'll talk about how I compiled it to make it really small. Uh, so yeah, curl dash i. Remember the dash i for the in, for the interactive. Oh, and the little owl. I'll show you the banner in a second before we. Um... So there we go. Sleep. It'll do the sleep thing again like we did before. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't pass anything, then you just get hello. This is your right. Let's quickly just look at the. Um... Uh, I guess so. Oops. I've got hiccups in the banner, wasn't it? I just found um, some ASCII art of an owl, and then I just formatted it with the R for raw, and then you do R hash quote, then you need to remember to kind of do the opposite at the end, so then you do quote hash. You don't need to do the R again at the end, obviously. Um, I used Termion just to give it some colored eyes. So yeah, that's... Um, made the eyes red reset red reset um, it needs to reset after for some reason anyway that's not really important in the, the grand scheme of things but it just looks kind of cute and all oh, with red eyes okay uh, what were we gonna look at we're gonna look at how we got it so small so um, if we go to cargo This is what I love about Rust, just the simplicity of just everything in the cargo tumble was just very, very cool. Um, so profile release, these three lines. So um, if you've not learned anything so far, hopefully this might be new to you. So LTO, I, um, uh, is it link time optimization? Something, something optimization. So we set that to true. And opt level, you can set it to Z uh, or S. <clears throat> I believe S is smallest. Don't quote me on that. But um, so if we do, I'll do cargo. Actually, if I show you target, uh, we get to release. Um, sorry, debug. You can see that the Binary is 6.9 meg, which is well, it's not too bad, but it's bigger. We can do better. So, uh, cargo clean, which should get rid of that. If we do, we can see it's gone. And let's go back up to higher directory and we'll do cargo run dash dash rel release and it should read from cargo.toml that we want to make it very small and uh, any guesses as to how small it will be <laughs> it really is uh, quite a significant no guess run it it's a significant improvement uh, I don't want to do that um, targets see, uh, was it on? no one release? Yeah, and it's gone from what was it before? Six point nine when it was in debug down to now it's in release five hundred and ten k. And we could run it from here just to prove that it's really not working, and then we just. Do that again, and you can see it's still working, which is what you'd expect. Uh, <laughs> I didn't need get, did I? I needed, um, I don't know, time. There we go. So a very minimalist web server, and the difference between what you would see in most tutorials, the Rust book, maybe Tim Clicks, if you followed his really cool video. The main difference here is that I've added the routes, the routes. <clears throat> and obviously I've compiled it down to a nice 
510 kilobytes. So I'm happy with that. And I think in future I'm going to go and go away and write some useful functions and then include them with the rest of the code. Um, so yeah, if you want to just see the project structure, it literally is just um, banner in main. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully that's just given you a little bit of, um, I don't know, if, you, if you're just learning, it's given you um, some inspiration as to how simple it can be to make a very, very much smaller binary. So that's um, what? 10% uh, of the size of the original, uh, which is or less than 10% of the size. And to be able to write your own web server, coming from um, a language like Python, maybe, um, to be able to write something from scratch like this is, I think, is uh, brilliant. Um, you will need to try and familiarize with using buffers and bytes, which is a bit of a learning curve. Um, streams, so um, yeah, with the stream you've got um, obviously you you need to check whether it's okay or it's an error, and if it's okay, then you can create the uh, you can spawn a thread, and then you can handle that connection. So you're basically iterating over every stri every stream in the in the listener, the incoming listener, and that's where you set the the address of your your server and the port number so 8080 is fairly in fact 8080 wouldn't be a good idea because it could clash with a proxy somewhere but um yeah just choose any port number as long as whatever port number and ip address well for instance if you, you're going to be testing it locally or even deploying it onto a server you'd probably still want to be using that but um depending on what else other services you've got running on your computer that's acting as the server you may or may not want to use that port. Probably not. Um, so yeah, kind of a whistle stop tour of this little mini web server. And um, hopefully I've just, at least if you're not going to follow this from scratch, which I probably wouldn't recommend, it's best just to follow the Rust book. But once you've done the Rust book example, then maybe think about adding some routes, some routes. Um, yeah, and then compile it down to a really nice small size. And obviously, this would be really cool. I mean, lots of embedded devices have their own little mini web servers and so on. So I think it's probably a really useful um, skill or knowledge to have as to how to write and compile a web server to a very small size. Obviously, this isn't embedded because it's got all the additional libraries. But from this, you could then investigate writing a small binary for uh, some embedded device or so on so yeah thanks for watching i'll be back soon thumbs up like subscribe all the usual stuff please yeah comments all good any advice and so on thank you